Hi there, Samuel Dorm, I'm here again. You're gonna see me talking to Carl Bronband, one of my favorite bloggers out there, really, uh, as a YouTuber, as a blogger, as an entrepreneur, really is one of the best that actually knows how to talk and show you what a real person actually make online. And that's a great thing because we talked about all about niches, or niches, however you call it, and we talked about what makes a better side, one side being better than the other one, and what about how to actually approach content. So you're gonna see a lot of great stuff we talked about. So there you go, Carl Broadband. Thanks again for coming. Uh, so first off, Carl, if you can do like a little introduction, who are you, Carl Broadband? Yeah, so, yeah, so my name's Carl. I'm a YouTuber, affiliate marketer, blogger, and uh, dad and husband. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think I think people also forget. Yeah, we're, we're real life. You know, it's not just all YouTube <laughs> and affiliate marketing. Yeah, I'm you know husband. You know, three children, and uh, yeah, started doing online affiliate marketing and basically just sharing my journey on YouTube. That's yeah, that's how it started. You started like just like with YouTube. Yeah, well, I started doing affiliate marketing, blogging, basically, website about a passion and interest that I had, writing articles, and kind of thought, okay, you know, maybe I should kind of document what I'm doing. And my son said, well, why don't you just record it, put it on YouTube? So I said, yeah, okay, let's do that. I just thought it was a way of just kind of documenting everything that I was doing and see where I could take it. And I just thought, yeah, put my, I switched the camera on and literally my son's bedroom turned his computer on, switched the camera on and just, yeah, basically just said, hey, I've, you know, built a website it's around this topic. And um, yeah, I just started filming myself really. And it kind of just grew from there. Wow. That's, you know, that's an excellent idea. I think, um, I think you are one of the first I ever saw, like doing like, you know, that income report. And I started to see it like, that's interesting because people not usually don't don't like to say, yes, this is how much I make. Yeah, this is how much I'm rich. This is how much I'm less rich. It's like it's like really blow my mind. Like as people actually go live and say, Yeah, this is how much I actually make every month. Yeah, well, I, I, I watched thing. I watched I watched other people and I was I kind of saw some numbers and I just thought, are these numbers really real? You know, could somebody <laughs> make you know ten thousand dollars a month or whatever? And I just thought, you know what? Well. I have nothing to hide. I'm going to be really open and honest because I didn't want to be one of these people who's on YouTube and maybe, you know, lying or making some numbers up because I thought you'll get caught out in the end. I, you know, I don't want to wake up every morning and be worried that what I've said that's incorrect, somebody's found it out. I mean, who wants to live a life like that? So I just said, if I'm going to do YouTube, I'll just basically show everything and you know, I have nothing to hide and I'll just show what I earn. And if these numbers are real, then you'll see that, you know, so I just, that was it. I, I basically just didn't want the pressure of trying to, you know, build a career, build around fake numbers or unrealistic targets. I just thought I'll just do what I do and I'll show you, you know, <laughs> and that was it really. Yeah. It's like, I told you, like every time I see your videos, there's something that you can't hide. You are actually a real person. You're not actually trying to sell anything, even though I know your services and I actually, you know, like I also, you know, used your services in a lot of stuff in a lot of my websites and my client website. But still, there's something really truthful about you that you're actually doing. Listen, this is what I do. Yes, because I'm doing it a lot of time. I can also give services about it. And it's not the opposite the way around, like income school, authority hackers or all the guys out there that actually doing the services of YouTube because they have a service. Uh, yeah, behind. yeah. So I mean, I, I I don't have any courses. I mean, I offer a keyword research package to help basically new websites because there's a lot of people that start off a, a blog, a website about yeah. something they're interested in, and they they'll spend a year or six months writing articles that possibly won't rank and won't actually you know, move the needle on their website financially or traffic wise. And I just didn't want a lot of people to fall into that trap of you know. Yeah going after keywords they just simply can't rank for because all that'll do is discourage them. They'll they'll write for six months, they'll burn themselves out and they'll see nothing for it. So I offered a, ke a keyword research package, which I don't promote, I don't push <laughs> it. I hardly ever talk about it because, you know, it is a very time consuming thing for me to do is, yeah, sure. you know, 
for whatever, $80, $90, whatever it is, you know, to, to spend two or three hours, maybe even sometimes a full day doing that service wow. for that. It, it, I don't promote it that much. So, yeah, I don't have a course or anything like that. I, it's just me sharing my journey more than anything, really. And I kind of hope that does inspire people. And, yeah, you know, in some of the videos, I have to make it worth my time by saying there's a link in the description. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people don't realize, you know, it'll take me all day to film a video, it'll take me all day to edit it. It's kind of two days worth of work. So yeah. I think sometimes, you know, people have to understand, you know, don't begrudge me just putting a link in the description. <laughs> you know, it's how I make my living. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I told you, because also, like, let's say Adam Enfroy, you know, Adam Enfroy. Uh, yeah. Uh, so now, I like what he does and still he's going, I feel like he's beating around the bush, like talking about the same stuff all over again. And this is something it's like, he also recommended like to do 30 days each day to do a video. And this is not something I believe in. Just a quick reminder, I'm 20 years doing SEO, 20 years I'm doing uh, uh, talks about SEO in a lot of conferences, well, here in Israel, also at uh, Brighton. 2022 in April also did a talk and every time I see people like actually doing talks or even talking about just talking about SEO and niche websites you can't do a lot of stuff that actually new you can't actually make anything new it's probably going to be the same thing the only thing you can do something new like you do and a lot of guys doing it online it's monthly income report what have I done what actually brought me this kind of money was it Ezoic? Was it TikTok? Was it whatever? Just what actually I did and not just talk about, yeah, all right, you need to do blog. You need to do content. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I've brought fewer videos out on calbrawlbent.com on YouTube kind of thing. I've yeah. brought less and less videos out because like you say, you, you, you're right. There's only so much you can talk about if you're only covering the niche of blog content. You know, yeah. there's only so many times I can tell you, how to do keyword research. There's only, only so many times I can say, this is how many words you may need to write. So sure. it does become quite saturated. I had this conversation with somebody recently, another YouTuber who wanted to kind of blog his journey and things like that. And I just said, you know, you will go down this really small, narrow niche yeah. of reaching a target audience where my channel only gets about 10, it gets about 10 subscribers a day, which is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if I if I talked about something like, you know, cryptocurrency or <laughs> drop shipping, I oh. could probably 10x the amount of subscribers I get each day because right. our niche is very, very small. So the only thing I thought about is, like I say, just being probably the most open and transparent blogger on YouTube, just basically <laughs> saying, I'll even show you my P&Ls. You can have my spreadsheets if you want to use them. Yeah, this, this is it. And I showed the good things and I showed the bad things. I've, I've had websites fail I've had projects that just didn't take off. Yeah. I've even had projects where I kind of signed up to doing it and I was like, right, I'm going to show everybody, but it was boring. So I kind of just said, you know what? Nah, let's just leave it. And I'll, <laughs> it, that is, that is me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to just do it because I think it gets subscribers or views. If I find it boring, I'll just drop it and move on to something else. Cause you know, if I find it boring, the audience is probably going to find <laughs> it boring. <laughs> You know, as, a, as an SEO person, uh, and I think a really entrepreneur enthusiast, let's say like that, yeah, I think the, the best things to, to know or to learn, it's actually the boring stuff, because the boring stuff will probably make you know exactly what's going to make it or what, what's going to break it. Now, yeah. Actually, it's actually uh, bringing me to my next question. What do you think is the difference? When do you know when a good site is taking off? And what can cause him actually to break off and say, I have it. I will just move on to the next next niche or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, I just need to see traction around one or two uh, keywords. I, I need to see something that seems that I always say Google showing you a bit of love. It's when you publish a number of articles. Let's say you've got a brand new site. I'll put 30 articles on it, various keywords. And then Google seems to pick up on one. And then it gives me something to kind of roll with. So it might be, okay, I've wrote these 30 topics, but actually these two, it's it's ranking really well. And Google's it's getting a lot of impressions. People are clicking through and reading it. And that gives me something to kind of get my teeth into and kind of go after. So that for me is like the, it's like the, 
green flag being waved to say, go, go after this. And the red flag for me is when I have some technical issues, let's say with publishing content, it's just not indexing them. It's just, you know, it's not, it's crawling them. It's just not indexing them. It doesn't like them. Then that's a red flag to me because, I, you know, there the could be, if you get over all the technical issues, make sure have your, your website's set up, everything's correct, that side of it. It's ju- and Google just does not want to show you love. And I've had that. I've had websites that are technically perfect and there's no, there should be no, no indexing, not indexed. Yeah, just and just, you know, it just doesn't like it, just will not index that content. I had one called the Mega Website and it was yeah. one that I really, focused heavily on i set i spent months creating the 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 structure the semantic structure of how the articles would be laid out laid out how they will feed to each other create these beautiful little silos it was all perfect and google just didn't like it it just <laughs> just it just wouldn't rank the content i mean it is now slowly it's it's indexing all the posts now it is getting there but it took nearly two years for google to kind of go okay let's Let's start putting them in the index. I tried everything possible. Many people said there's a bug, there's a flaw with Google, and we knew it had its yeah. in- indexing issues last year. But now we're over it, and it kind of still shows it a little bit of love. So when I get a site like that, I kind of just hold back and think, we need to figure this out. I, you can't, if you're a new blogger, you can't be, be spending your precious time writing content on a site like that you're yeah. just going to drive yourself into the ground you're going to see no return on your time of your investment so yeah on those kind of sites I, I sit back but when I get the sites where whether that be it's got out of the google sandbox and it's just taking off whatever that mm-hmm. may be as soon as I see that little glimmer of hope that wow I think we've I think we've found something in here that's when I go after it nice hey this is a cool vision because Every time I see a new website coming up, we're doing actually uh, services like that. We're building actually digital assets, you know, basically yeah. as, a, as a blog, like actually earned money from Mizowik and stuff. And it's every time I see a new website coming up, the first thing, as you just mentioned, I'm looking, you know, at indexing, just to see that it's yeah. actually indexing anything, I mean, just to see it. something's happening, something is rolling now. And, and now in the last couple of months, I can see a lot, a lot of Google updates and everybody's talking about the same. My site got hit, my site got hit. And I'm like, is it going to stop something? You think Google is actually trying to attack something? Like, you know, the AI content, which I don't believe it. I, I love AI content. I love Jasper and I love uh, this kind of stuff. But I do, do you believe that actually Google is trying to attack something like bloggers or affiliate marketers or just, something yeah, I know before the holidays whatever <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I mean I don't think Google's kind of attacking anything I think Google's a business and it's evolving it has to change you know and I don't think anybody can deny the amount of content that's being published yeah. in this last year with the generation of AI tools yeah. if, you, if you think you know before as a physical blogger me sitting down here and writing I could probably write let's say 2,000 words a day, and then I'd probably burn out. That'd be enough for me. <laughs> so 2,000 words a day. So let's say I do that five days a week. So I've got five really good articles published a week. With the influx of tools like this, people are able to publish that amount of content in one day. So you have to think that the amount of swapping and changing in the, SERP, in the index it is crazy the number of articles coming in and coming out and moving up and moving down. Google's a business. It only has limited resources. Uh, <laughs> you know, it only has a certain capability to publish and manage the content that's thrown on the internet. So I believe it's just evolving. And I think it's trying to find a way of figuring out, okay, how do I best serve the user? At the end of the day, all this content's coming and I, I need to figure out you know, if you search a, a phrase, you know, um, what paint is best for my house, they need to figure out what's the best answer for that customer. Yeah. And, and and they need to figure that out. So I think they're just changing. I think it's evolving. I think they're testing. Uh, and let's face it, you know, without Google doing some testing, we could be in a world of hurt. I mean, you know, the, the, the years gone by where people could manipulate the rankings and things like that. I think we're past those days now. I think Google's smart enough to figure out now that 
it's more difficult to do that. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think it's harder to do that now. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you wanted to do that, you would have to go to great lengths to do that. So I think Google's testing and working things out to keep the index a better place for everybody, better place for us, better place for the viewer. I mean, I wouldn't want to write, let's say, an absolute world-class post that I believe should be at number one because it's the best thing out there. And then somebody comes along and outranks me with total garbage. You know, I don't want that. that. It's no good for the user. So Google's got to figure out how it stops that happening. So, you know, although I'm moan about Google when my site gets hit, I also <laughs> do believe they are doing a good job. You know, they've, they have a lot to contend with, you know what I mean? So, um, and like I say, it's a business. At the end of the day, they've got shareholders as well. So they have to make a profit. So, exactly. you know, there may be something in the background that's, you know, working towards yeah. them making more money, um, whatever that is. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's got a hard job to do. And I think sometimes we, we're a little bit quick to to beat them. Um, yeah. And it's usually when our sites are, are being hit. I mean, nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody slags Google off when they're making tons of money and their sites are going through the roof, do they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can see a lot of websites going up, especially lately, um, thanks to Jar and Jasper, you know, and, and stuff like that, and actually like making content really, really fast. And that's why I started to see also the all the snippet result. You can see it changing like almost daily. You can see a new snippet result, a new snippet result. They're like actually doing, like let's say they're thinking about, oh yeah, this is a good result. No, this one is better. No, this one is better. No, this one is better. They're trying to evolve just as you said, but still a lot of them is actually AI. And I like AI from the, from the, from the main reason, just because it actually started to be a lot, lot more directly answers. Because when you ask a question on Google, you want to see the answer. And when someone types a question and goes to some blogger, which actually wrote, as you said, 2000 words a day, and he sees the, the human, let's say, you know, the human text, you can see the human text is also a lot of garbage people, yeah. right? Because they don't know how to start. And like, uh, when you think about uh, bowling, it's kind of important yeah. to throw a ball straight. Like what? Yeah. And then you start to think like, <laughs> the Jasper actually doing a better job because he just answered it and answered the question and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a fine balance between originality. I mean, I'm, I'm all for originality, but let's face it, in our industry, not everybody is able to go out and write, you know, like buy a particular product, review it, to image, original images. I get that. It's the ideal scenario, isn't it? If, if every single article on the web was published by somebody who'd actually bought a product, tested it, or, you know, had real life experience in that topic. I get it. But the world is not like that. And it's business, isn't it? So people are going to find ways of creating content that's um that doesn't have all that originality but it still serves a purpose and like you say with ai content if it can get straight to the point and cut out all that fluff exactly. and you know and, and just go you ask me a question here's the answer then great my, my only concern with that is is where is it getting that answer and that's always going to be the question you know because if it's getting one answer that's being regurgitated several times, yeah. which, and you know, it's like Chinese whispers. You remember that where you <laughs> whisper something by the time it gets to the 11th person, it's changed. It's, yeah. not, it's not the same whisper, is it? You know, it's, it's, yeah, that's, right. that's my only concern that, that it doesn't get diluted down the chain to eventually it's giving you an answer to something that's incorrect. Because yeah, that's dangerous. So many options. <laughs> that's dangerous, uh, you know, uh, information to give to the readers when it actually like a Chinese whisper, and then it's really messed up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw it a lot of times. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, and, and that's that's where AI will evolve, and that's where Google will evolve. Both of them have to. AI has got to figure out. Okay, every four years or whatever, we refresh and we look for new information. I can't keep using the information that was published twelve years ago. So the AI content will have to refresh um, and, and find new information and new answers. And Google will have to learn, okay, this is AI content. I've spotted that, but it's new information and it's up to date and it's correct. So, <laughs> Yeah, hopefully it's going to be correct. Um, you know, every time we talked about like a um, new website and whatever happens now, like 
Think about your old website when you just started, when you now build a new website. Like what actually you think you're doing differently? Because the content is content. Research is research, but is there something you're doing different now that you did, you know, on the first uh, websites? Yeah, I think I think my first website, I think everybody will learn a lot from their first website because usually you put the most amount of effort into your content on the first <laughs> website. And often with your first website, you write about things you think your readers will want to know, which is really important and will enjoy reading rather than what will bring you in the money. <laughs> so I think that's the difference. I think as you devolve, as you evolve and develop in your business and, and uh, produce more and more websites, more and more content, your mindset will go more towards a return on your investment. I think you will start thinking about what content brings the money in rather than what content suits the reader. So I think that's changed. I think when I originally started, it was all about, I didn't know what would make money. I didn't know which articles would make money. I just thought... If you're interested, my my first website was Monty Python. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's <laughs> of all about the films and the yeah. So I'm a huge Monty Python fan. My nickname is Big Nose, which is a <laughs> clip. It, it's a clip from the life of Brian, where there's an argument with the college of a Big Nose. I mean, a long story, love but yeah, it. my my nickname is Big Nose. So I love Monty Python. So I wrote articles. I actually believe people would want to read. And that nobody had ever wrote about uh, uh, scenes and clips that I noticed that other people didn't. And I and I thought the information on there was fantastic. Now, it, it went really well with Monty Python fans. I had a Facebook <laughs> page and the people in there were like, oh, my God, you spotted that. I never spotted that before. I'm glad you're talking about that. But it didn't make money because nobody <laughs> was searching it. It was great information. It was a fantastic story. Uh, but it made no money because nobody was searching it because nobody knew about it because I'd spotted it. <laughs> so I think I think what I learned is as you move on that, you know, it's great to write content like that. And you should always write information that your readers will want to read and be interested okay. in. But there has to be a balance. You can't do that forever. Otherwise, you know, you're just never going to make any money if that's what you want to do. From yeah, the exactly. There's always... As you said, there's also always a difference between just writing a blog about stuff that you like uh, between a blog that you want to make money out of it. Yeah. If you want to make money of it, you probably would change your state of mind. Like, all right, what is the actually content that people is looking for? Not the content that I like. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is right. This is also, you know, this is true for all kinds of industries because there's a lot of musicians. I know I'm also a musician as, as a hobby. And I always say a lot of musicians, there are the musicians that actually make songs they know the people will like. And there's no, there's the kind of music you want to do. You want to make yeah. music that you love. But I don't think anybody's going to hear it. <laughs> you know, only you like your songs. And it's yeah. like that exactly, you know, uh, with content. But with content, I think there is something that I've changed like in a couple of uh, last years that actually changed the amount of content that I wrote to each one of my website. Because yeah. if I said like, all right, I have a nice blog, I used to write 30, 40 articles, that's it. I used to stop right there. And then I always thought about the, the people, uh, Google talking about a lot about topical authority. To become actually topical authority, you always say, well, I need a lot of content. But lately, John Mueller actually said it and said, you cannot be a topical authority with 30 articles. You're probably going to need a lot more than 70, 80 posts just to become something that I can say about you that you actually understand in this niche. So this is something that, well, I changed. You know, I said, every website now I'm building, I'm doing from, from start to finish, I'm going to do at least 100 ideas for post, and then I'm going to publish it. And then maybe I'm probably going to make money, but... I'm not going to make money from 30, 40 articles, even though I can see all the income school authority hackers, fans actually making blogs with 30 articles and say, I'm not making money. Something is wrong here. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a balance between uh, quantity uh, and quality, really. That's that's the thing as well. So I, I always started with, I'm kind of a, a quantity type of person. Mm. I do like to put a lot of um, articles on my website, particularly at the beginning, because like I said before, I like to test. I like to see what's working. And, and I can say, okay, I have a gardening website and I, I believe I can definitely 
be an authority on, you know, compost or garden soil. And I know I can. <laughs> and then you write all that content and you're not. It just doesn't do well. So I believe in putting a decent amount of uh, quantity of articles on your website because then I can filter through the data. And then, like you said, I can say, OK, well, you know, I've uh, I found that a couple of my articles, which are about bird feeders, are doing fantastic. So then I'll put 50, 60, 70 articles all about bird feeders <laughs> and they will all do really well because I can see that Google's showing me that love uh, and I've got the data there to prove it. Uh, and yeah. that's kind of how I do how I do it. I don't do it right from day one. So I don't launch a website and go, OK, lawnmowers, 100 articles on that. I tend to, like I say, I spread the keywords out a little bit in the beginning. And then as soon as I see some data where one or two are peaking and starting to take off, and then I write the topical clusters on those because I've already got the proof that it's working. Yeah, exactly. When I see topical authority websites, when I can actually see websites that go in really deep in the niche, I can see it's actually working a lot faster and a lot better, even though it's not that interesting always, you know, because yeah. I saw really worst ideas ever for a niche, you know, even for helmets, just for, you know, welding and stuff like that. And still, they are making money. You cannot say it's not good because it's making money. It's not interesting. By definition, this is not interesting. It's not yeah. some Wikipedia page I want to visit. But still, this is something that actually makes money. You can see all Philippa or Motion Invest, which I really like. I don't like, I don't know why. Not a lot of people know this website, but you know, Motion Invest, you probably know it. Yeah, I I see it's partly of... owned by Spencer Haas. Yeah, Spencer Haas from uh, Niche Pursuit. And then I can see a lot of websites over there that actually have not that good uh, ideas for niche, but they're making money. You know, you cannot, you cannot argue with income. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a friend of mine who's got, I will obviously reveal his niche, but he's got one of the worst niches imaginable. <laughs> I would have never dreamed of writing about it. It is the most boring niche in the world, and it gets half a million visitors a month. Half and a it's million? In, and, it's in, and it's in a good, it's got a good RPM as well. So, wow. it, and it's crazy. And when he showed me the That's niche, amazing. I was like, how dull is that? And he's like, yeah, it makes a ton of money. And I'm like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Wow. That's, that's really something that I, I can't, I can't, I really want to make, you know, finally, sometimes I, uh, I'm doing some niche research and I'm looking for a good niche and then I find something and I can see it's really open wide. I can go inside, like in the first page, like, really instantly and I'm nope nope I'm not gonna write about it nope there's no yeah. way I'm gonna do this boring you know topic I cannot do this I cannot I like to do usually I'm doing uh, one of the two it's like either pets everything that relate to pets it can be a type of cat type of dog I like to be specific with type of dogs or either just hobbies everything about hobbies uh, I like to play. I like to play pool. You know, uh, pool billiard. Yeah. I really like to pool. Uh, to play. I uh, like bowling. Uh, I used to be in league. I used to live uh, in the U.S. like a couple of years. I used to play bowling a lot. So uh, I said, all right, whatever. Uh, I can do some uh, nice niche about it, and actually working pretty good. Um, but I cannot deal with everything I can see now. All about finance and health. And you say this is what Google fighting about. Yeah. This is what actually good. Why people keep doing niche like that? I can see you like the gardening. And I, I also I saw, I think, a golf one, a new one, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. The, the thing that I like, and like you say, I, I can't write boring things, but I also need to have an endless kind of supply of <laughs> either keywords or topics I can write about. So, yeah. So I'm starting a new golfing channel. It's something I'm really passionate about. I'm really into video at the moment. So I'm starting a YouTube channel about golf. I, I go play regularly a different course every week around the country. So um, I, and, and it was from, and it started off with the lack of information out on the web. So I, every time I go play a new course, I, I Google it and I search it. I either YouTube it or I, I Google it and I'll say, I've just played Filey, which is on the East coast of Great Britain. And I, and I Googled it, Filey golf course. And there was nothing, nobody had reviewed it. There was no information. And I wanted that unique information like, you know, I'm not a great golfer and I get a bit embarrassed sometimes when I'm a bit nervous when I'm on the first tee. So I want to know, is the first tee right outside the clubhouse where everybody's watching? Because if it is, <laughs> I'm probably not going to go play there. Um, is, it, is it really, really hard? You know, uh, and all that kind of thing. I want all this information. 
and, and there was none of it out there. So I went to YouTube and I had a look and the only video on YouTube was the club itself that had put their own promotional video. Well, that's always going to be biased, isn't it? It's always <laughs> going to be a great review. Exactly. So, you know, so we went and played it yesterday. We filmed it. We've put a re- got a really good, honest review on um, YouTube now. Or it will we'll be out very soon. We're also going to write the blog up about it. We're going to link the two together. It's gone across all our social media. And there's now a genuine resource for anybody. For If somebody wants to go play a finally golf club, they can see an honest review of the golf course and they can see the video to back it up. But it's something I'm passionate about. So I think that quality will come through my passion. I think the the honesty, the originality will be shown through my love of the sport. And the thing is, it's endless. There are something like 4,000 golf clubs in the UK. Wow. And obviously worldwide, there are hundreds of thousands of golf (laughs) courses. So the keywords and the opportunities are endless, you know. (laughs) So I do like niches that are like that. So you like say, like dog breed, animal breeds. Yeah. You know, if you was into birds, ornithology or whatever, there are millions yeah. of species out there, you know. So yeah. it's kind of endless. So I do like niches that are like that, that, you know, you're really passionate about and that uh, you'll never get bored of writing. And it's also, you'll never, you know, not have enough content to write. There's always going to be content available for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. You're right. Because... That I think, of course, this is the best niche. You know, also um, Jim and Rick, I remember they talked about it. The best niche for you is probably the best niche that you will say I'm interested about and I can write uh, a lot of content about it. As you said, like 4,000 places, I can write all day about it and will never stop. So probably. Yeah, I mean, they, they are also businessmen. So I don't know if your audience might not know, but Ricky and Jim came to my house for yeah. two days. And they did some one-on-one coaching with me, right, literally right here in the next room. Wow. And you know, they are, mm. you know, they are businessmen as well. So I yeah. did have a niche. I had two niches at the time. I was one with, which was aquarium, the tropical fish and uh, garden ponds. Now I was an authority in that because I had my own store that sold tropical fish and pets, uh, and I had done some talks and lectures on it. So I had some authority with that. Wow, I also had one website which was in a medical niche. It was about a skin condition called eczema. Wow. Um, in America, I think it's called pronounced eczema. Um, <laughs> and I had that. Now, I was really passionate about that because I my family suffers from it. My friends have got it. I've gone through treatment. My children have gone through treatment. Wow. So I had a lot of authority in that. Although I wasn't a doctor, I believe that the information I was giving was through experience. And I thought that's what Google wanted. And Ricky and Jim looked at the information and said, yeah, it's 100%. It's original. It's great, helpful content. But it's not going to make you money. It's <laughs> just not. It's, if you want to do it for fun and to help people, it's great. Carry on doing it. But if you want it to make you know, $5,000 a month in ad revenue, it's not going to do it. Because I'm never going to compete with you know, WebMD and uh, yeah. NH, uh, you know, NHS doctor service. So I'm not going to compete with those type of websites. But if you want to share your quality, helpful information with friends and family and people in forums, great. Continue to do that. But like they said, there were businessmen that were like, if you want to do this as a living, I suggest you focus on something else. So, yeah, I mean, that was, that was good advice for me because I could have been battling away for that website for, you know, four years later. I could still be yeah. working on that. And, and I don't think it'd have had more than 20 or 30,000 page views a month. So it was very, very limited. A couple of, prob- what? Like probably a uh, couple of a hundred dollars, maybe, maybe from ads. Yeah, exactly. Like I say, really helpful content might change somebody's life, which is always a good thing. But yeah. as a business, could I have spent four years on a website that might only be making me $500? I can't, mm. I can't do that. The amount of uh, actually power you need to take out of you to start right about it and then like earn $500, of course, it's not going to yeah. work. Yeah, but, but with the tropical fish site, within 12 months, it was earning like $2,000, <laughs> you know, so. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you know, so so that's the difference. So, uh, yeah. What do you think it made it like, got it like $2,000 so fast? I, I think it's because of my knowledge in that industry. I kind of knew which fish were popular. I knew the questions people would have. I knew the issues people would have. Um, so I think it was that really that I think people could read it and realize 
he's not just trying to sell me a filter for my fish tank. He knows <laughs> that he knows that that one's rubbish. He's definitely tried that. Um, <laughs> and people are smart. People read content and they know within minutes, you know, like say, if you've actually done that, you know what I mean? So, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Probably topical. It's all about topical. I ask, I want to ask you a question because I know uh, affiliate gathering is like really when is going to be the next uh, affiliate so gathering? Ne- so May the 19th, 2023 is the next one. That'll be the second one ever. Wow. And tell me like, even if we talk, we just talked about like how hard it is to reinvent uh, re- new stuff about it. And now we're going to make, you know, actually talks about it because it's not talk about SEO. I can be garbage talking about SEO all day long. Believe me, there is a lot of shit going on inside the SEO, even the community, the, the industry, the technical stuff. What are you going to talk about? Tell me like, what, what do you have over there that you, you know, like people getting around like every year? So, so first of all, the main thing is it's, it's not a conference. It's not an SEO conference or anything like that. Mm-hmm. The, 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 you know, the clue is in the name. It's an affiliate gathering. It's a gathering of people and friends. The, the main reason I want to put this on is, yeah, it's going to develop and people are going to learn something. There's going to be lots and lots of workshops. There'll be some presentations. I know presentations will be things like, you know, I know there's a company that's hopefully going to run one of the workshops and they're doing a real big study into kind of data, like how many posts you'll need to make X amount of money. And, <laughs> and they're going to be great informative workshops. But the main thing about it is you can meet, like you just said before we got on this interview, we can put a face to the name. We can shake each other's hand. We can buy each other a drink and swap emails and phone <laughs> numbers. And that's what it's about. It's about making friends and, you know, having them real life conversations where, I, I can't. Sean Mars was then. I don't know if you know Sean Mars. He's a fantastic SEO guy. He's been doing black hat SEO many, many years ago. Now, you know, does white hat. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and I think he knows kind of everything there is to know kind of about SEO. And he even he came away and he said, oh, my God, I had a conversation with somebody in the corridor who told me a keyword research method that they were using. And it's blown my mind. He said, how did I not think of this? And he said, <laughs> wow. and this was a beginner. He said, this was somebody who's just started blogging a year ago. He said, and he's just opened my mind to this new process. He said, and I'm testing it now and I'm loving it. And that, <laughs> nice. that made me smile because I was like, that's exactly why we did this event. So, you know, yeah. so new people, beginners, experienced people can all mingle and share information and, you know, get tips and best practices. But the main thing is just to make friends. It's it, it can be a lonely business. This can you know you. I can sit my computer here for ten hours, not see anybody, not talk to anybody, publish <laughs> yeah. a few articles. That's draining. That oh, is yeah. really really draining on your mental well being, your physical. You sat there, you're not going out. But I can you know I can sit here for a couple of hours and I can pick up the phone and say, hey, do you want to meet for a coffee and let's go talk shop. You know, and it's great, you know, and I get probably more out of that meeting for two hours, meeting a friend who's a fellow blogger than anything else. So, yeah, I mean, that's why we do it. But, you know, there will be the presentations, there will be the workshops, you will learn things. But I think the event itself is the main selling point that people that are going to be there are not companies. Obviously, they are going to be companies, but it's not (laughs) all about the company trying to sell you things. It's about making friends. But as I told you, um, the people I, I talked about, uh, talked with about affiliate gathering, they say it's great, especially because you can meet actually new people. And and the one thing that I love the most, people said this is not SEO freelancers or stuff like that. This is actually yeah. people that started to be a bloggers and started to make money out of something they never thought about. This is not like, you know, SEO. I know how to make money out of SEO. I know how to make, you know, uh, bring new customers. I know how to bring a website to be first, uh, ranking high. But still, uh, this is something so out of the ordinary, actually being a blogger and actually making money out of it. Because when you meet a blogger, actually the title of blogger, some, sometimes you feel you know someone like you in the past, you know, he knows something about something. He's making a blog about it. Maybe 10,000 visitors, top. He loves it. Everybody loves it, but he's not making any money. Usually a blogger, it's a hobby. 
It's not yeah. a profession. <laughs> you yeah. see what I mean? So yeah. This is so great. Why are you doing it all, only once a year? Well, we wanted, I mean, it's a lot of organization. I'll be honest. It's, it's, it's a big event for somebody like me to put on. It's, I have a business partner. We, we build, do it together. And we, we're not hiring the assistance of some event company that can just, you know, put them together like that. This is, you know, we do everything. So it's a lot of organization. Yeah. We're only doing it for one day. But what we do is we do some fringe events the night before. So anybody traveling up, we get like little separate fringe events where people can come and meet and have a drink and have a meal uh, and have a chat before the event. And we do them so that if you're on your own and you don't know anybody, you can come and meet some friends. And the, the amount of people that, 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 that like meet up those nights and go, do you want to go to the event together tomorrow? Yeah, I'll meet you at nine o'clock outside. Then you don't feel lonely or you don't feel, you know, uh, yeah. isolated. So we do the fringe events the night before, and then we have the main event, which runs all day. And then in the evening, we're going to have kind of some meetups again. So like one big kind of, you know, meetup point where everybody can go to and again, mingle and have drinks. And then we're also uh, this year, or next year, 2023 affiliate gathering, we're going to have hopefully trying to have some events the day after as well. So if anybody's still in the area, we might be able to organize something where, you know, if they still want to keep going and listening and talking about affiliate marketing, and they can go to that event as well. So um, we're going to do that. We would eventually like to do it maybe over a two day period. But you oh, got to nice. remember, this is this is new for me. The finances involved in setting up something like this is astronomical. Yeah, I know. the first year was such a risk for me. I mean, it could have it could have bankrupted me. It really could. The wow. first year, I mean, you know, just coming out of COVID. The country was still oh. kind of in lockdown and to put on an event where people physically needed to turn up uh, and we had all the media crews to pay, all the staff to pay, the venue to pay, the advertising, everything. Ooh. It was such a risk for me to do it. You know me, you know, you know, like I say, you know, my income products, you know what I earn. I'm not a rich man. So to put <laughs> this to put this on was a big, big risk, you know, for these for these big companies that do these events. They can put them on, you know, easily yeah. without any risk whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so, but for me to do it and keep it as personal and as friendly as possible yeah. takes a lot of doing. So, yeah, that's why there's only one a year. <laughs> Once a year, that's more than enough when you're doing all of it by yourself. Uh, the the business partner you said was it Chris or is not is it some no no it's a, it's a friend of mine called Marie she was if you, if anybody was there I did drag her on stage last year yeah. she didn't like really getting in front of the camera um, <laughs> Marie's um, she's a, a, like an event manager she has past experience uh, and that's that's that it wouldn't have been set up without Marie being there I kind of I'm the face of it if you like. Uh, and she's really the, um, you know, the cogs that make it. She's the organizer. You're the brand. Come on. <laughs> literally, no, literally, she's the brand. She's the organizer. I just do what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but together as a team, we work really well. She She's put on some big events before. So she had that experience. Um, I mean, it all started with me and her husband. Her husband's an affiliate market and a blogger. And oh, me, me, right. me and him were having a coffee and we were talking and she was just like, you two never shut up about blogging. <laughs> and she was like, is, ev is everybody like this? And who's into blogging? And I'm like, yeah. You, you, yeah. If, if me and you sat in a room, we would not talk anything, would we? Other than SEO work and, and, and websites and, you know. And I said, <laughs> everybody's like that. I said, because you don't have anybody to talk to. My wife doesn't understand it. My children don't understand it. So when I get the opportunity to talk to somebody who knows what a niche website is, I, I jump on that opportunity and we just talk <laughs> for hours. So she said, well, why don't you put like an event on and get a few people together? And I was like, I don't know how to run an event. And she said, I do. I was like, okay, well, I'll reach out to everybody and I'll get people wow. interested on my channel and through my connections. You do the physical organization of it and let's see if it works. And uh, wow, yeah, kind of a dream team now. It works really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, this is so you need some balls to do this kind of stuff. I, I believe me, I saw a lot of conferences here in Israel, and we are a small country, we are like, like eight, nine million people. And it's like the SEO uh, people, I think there is like, I believe there is no more than 4,000 SEO uh, yeah. professional, uh, even you know, beginners. 
And every time I, I speak in the, let's say in the SEO community or in my YouTube channel, and I can see every time I can see probably the same response, they lack SEO and they want to do it for other businesses. Not a lot. And I'm talking about like really, really small percent, less than a 10%, I believe, from the SEO community actually understand the, the let's say, the, the purpose of actually making an, a blog and just do a small blog as, as a niche, in a, just a niche, <clears throat> and actually doing just SEO for that and making money out of that. Because yeah. this is not something that sounds like easy, let's say. Because when you want to give someone actually a tip, like what to do, and you just say, yeah, just open a new website, like on WordPress, like, I don't know, 10 minutes with Cloudways or whatever. Yeah. And you just open the blog and write everything you think people will search about. This is not something you could say, I cannot make money out of it. You're crazy. You're stupid. There's no way. And I talk to a lot of people and people, every time I show them one website or two or three, and they're like, no, nah, it's by accident. This is luck. This is not, nah, you see something that happened once in a blue moon. And no, this is just put some content, start doing not even SEO, because as you said, most of the people that are actually doing wish I, niche website, they're not SEO person. They're just yeah, well, I mean, I, I was just going to say that. I mean, I still, you know, I'm almost five years into this now. I still kind of cringe a little bit and get a little <laughs> bit nervous when I hear the word SEO. It just sounds <laughs> so like really technical, doesn't it? And, you know... <laughs> oh my gosh, he's going to ask me some SEO technical <laughs> questions. But when you break it down into the basics, you know, it's very, it's a very, very simple process. And I think people really over confuse this, the, the process behind this. Yeah. You can get very technical, don't get me wrong. And somebody who's a SEO wizard could probably take one of my websites and send it through the roof with some kind of technical yeah. SEO ability. Uh, most of us can't. So most of, just, most of us just need to keep this really, really simple, you know? So, yeah. I mean, that's why I've, you'll notice with affiliate gathering, there's hardly ever do we mention the word SEO because people think that means, you know, somebody's going to stand there and they're mm -hmm. going to get a laptop out and they're going to get for a load of data at you and loads of coding and jargon that they just simply won't understand. But yeah. when it's broken down into its basic form, then it is it is very very simple but like i say it does get scary especially for a beginner when they go you know how much seo do you know <laughs> what <laughs> you know who cares i'm making money what do you want from me <laughs> listen i have a dog website i write about my pool deal and, and it and it makes me money yeah exactly you, you're doing seo yeah exactly <laughs> and just so you know google always talk about it like all the represent whatever they're always talking about it you're not supposed to be an seo person you need to be a website yeah. person um just a, you know person to person uh, person <laughs> you know yeah, just a yeah no 100 percent. i mean it has to be like i said there's a there's a very very small technical part of it like i say because if you're writing about your poodle dog or your you know boxer dog or whatever yeah uh, you know and you're writing about like i said a, a part of that dog that's nobody's searching for it. yeah again it's going to be helpful content but nobody's going to find it because nobody's searching for it so there yeah. is some small elements to it but when people think like you know seo they they think they need to like I say they think they need to learn, learn coding and they need to you know trick google into this and trick google into that yeah. and you know put all these bells and whistles on their website and all these plugins that's gonna you know you make them a success overnight and like i say it, and it's not and it's the basics of SEO, you know, making sure you have a H1 title on your, yeah, website, exactly. on, on your article, just one. And, you know, clearly, you know, making it as easy for Google to know what that content's about. So it can show it to the right audience. It's as simple as that, you know, yeah. but uh, there are probably some really technical SEO stuff that I have not a clue about. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be honest, I'm not interested in it. <laughs> yeah. It goes over my head and I'm just like, yeah, no, I just, you know, I just want to keep things simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah you're right so Carl thank you very very much for being with me in this meeting I really really believe that a lot of stuff that we talked about here is like really new for people and really is going to help their SEO blogging not the SEO technical stuff just make a blog and make money about it from it because as, as I can see it from you it's kind of easy <laughs> But it's I'm, I'm just kidding. I know how hard it is, but it's great to hear it from you. How how you make it so simple, and how I can see it's a real person talk to me, 
and actually teach me something that's probably really great just to have in the end of the month. So yeah, thank no, you very thank much, Carl. You're, you're very welcome. Thank you for inviting me. It's been great. Finally, we got to see each other virtually. Yeah, exactly. uh, hopefully one day, you, maybe you feel like gathering will meet face to face. But yeah, I mean, thank you for allowing me on your channel. And yeah, I hope your audience gets something out of this. Like I said, I'm a big believer in, yeah, definitely do what you're passionate about. Make sure you've got your business head on. You need to get a good return on your time as well as any investment you make in your money. But yeah, I do like to keep things simple. And there are, like I say, some small technical things you might need to do. But genuinely, yeah, it's common sense, a lot of it. And if you're writing what you believe your audience will want to read, you can't really go wrong. <laughs> exactly, you're right. Thank you very much, Carl. And uh, see you on the affiliate gathering. Fingers crossed. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>